Thanks for joining us for another Tantrum House crowdfunding conniption. Today we are employing our cunning magic skills to cast enchanted spells in the moonlit forest in the game Nocturne by Flat Out Games. We always like to make sure that you guys are aware right up front that our crowdfunded videos are sponsored in part by our own Kickstarter backers as well as by the creators of this game. <laughs> Hey gang, thanks for joining us at Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows. Today we're putting together the best set of magical items as we cast spells in the Enchanted Forest. Nocturne is a 1-4 to four player game that takes about 30-45 to 45 minutes to play. It's from designer David Ayezi and the Flat Out Games collab, and it features artwork from Beth Sobel. Now in this video we aren't going to be sharing any opinions on the game, but we do want to show you what it looks like out on the table and give you an idea of how it's played so that you can make an informed decision when it comes to becoming a backer. Let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, give each player their tokens, character card, and one starter concoction. Make a grid of item tiles and fill the forest sprite board for your player count. Flip three twilight cards and then you're ready to begin. The starting player will play their lowest token on any tile in the grid. In turn order, the other players may either pass or play a higher token on an adjacent tile. Once everyone has passed, the player with the highest token will take the tile and flip their disc over. The other players may either take their token back or they may send one to the forest sprite board where they are arranged by number order. The winner of the tile checks to see if they have completed any bonuses, and then they become the new start player for the next round. They may place any token adjacent to the one they just won. Once all of the tiles have been claimed, or all of the players have completely passed, the twilight round ends and the forest sprite board is resolved. Starting with the highest token, players may draft a tile to add to their collection. The grid and board are refilled, and three moonlight cards are revealed for the second half of the game. Players with remaining tokens will switch them out for shadow spell tokens based on token values. Play continues, and players work to gain sets of magical items which will score at the end of the game, and the player with the most points wins. Nocturne has played over two rounds, the Twilight and the Moonlight phases. The main difference is that the bonus cards for the Twilight phase are going to be kind of a first come, first serve, whoever gets them gets the points. Whereas in the Moonlight phase, bonuses are based on how tokens are configured on the board and who's able to get control of what areas typically for those types of goals. And those tokens are, the spell tokens, are awarded to help players make more powerful moves out on the grid. Now, those blue tokens cannot be used for any of those bonus scoring cards, that the Moonlight cards that are available that second phase of the game, and they also can't be used on the Forest Sprite board. So while they do give you some benefits because you didn't use some of your tokens in the first half of the game, they will be not available for all of the points in the second half of the game. But uh, if you don't use some of your tokens at the end, they are worth two points. So that kind of balances out if you were able to score a bunch in the first half and you don't get as many tiles in the second half, it does kind of give you a balance there. Now when you're trying to claim different tiles on the board, one of the things that may not be apparent from our explanation so far is that there's a bunch of strategy involved in kind of cornering tiles and making sure that you are the only one who could potentially lay on them. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good way to be able to spend your one and two tokens. If you're able to get into a corner where only one person can place, then you're guaranteed that tile. And so using your higher number tokens to beat people in battle and then your lower number tokens to be able to claim those ones that you kind of sorted off for yourself is a potential strategy in the game. Yeah, they call it corner casting. Um, now you can only corner cast one time. You can play somewhere in and a row. in a row. Yeah, you can play somewhere and then if nobody else can play because you have the highest tokens, you could keep playing tokens that are higher than other people, but that corner cast where you automatically get it no matter what, you can only do that one time, and then the next player in line will become the new starting player, and they can go anywhere on the board, so even if you've sectioned off some areas of the board that you couldn't get to otherwise, 
you can be able to access the entire board. Now, there's a lot of different tiles out on the board. A lot of those are going to be set collections where the more of them you get, the more points you'll get. Some of those are going to give you the ability to copy other tiles. Some of them are going to give you the opportunity to flip additional goal cards for yourself. There's a bunch of different tiles out on the board for you to choose from. Yeah, everyone does game one of those concoction cards at the beginning and it has some sets. So most of the tiles in the game will have some symbols in the left-hand corner and you can use those to fulfill only one time each. So those, even if a symbol might have two on it, or sorry, a tile might have two symbols, you can use the symbols one for one um, concoction card and one for another, but each of those symbols is one time use for fulfilling those goals that you can gain a lot of points by getting those special concoctions together that you're mixing your spells with. Now, one of the things we didn't clearly mention is that this is a prototype version of the game, so there could be changes to the artwork. The components mm -hmm. are all prototype. Uh, I think it'd be interesting, I don't know, if it was actually like clays for the final tiles in the game. I have no idea what those final things will be. If you're interested in it, you can definitely check out their Kickstarter campaign to learn more. And then if it looks like something you'd be interested in and might enjoy, be sure to back it as well. Yeah. There will also be a solo mode and a family mode, um, so be looking out for those rule updates. Um, usually they will give some type of indication about how that might change in gameplay, so you can be sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign for that information. And as always, thank you so much for checking out our videos here and subscribing to the Tantrum House channel. from Not designer Steve. David Lezzi. Iezzi. Iezzi. It's to play. It's from designer David Yezzi. I can't do it. Was that close? Iezzi? Iezzi. I'm assuming that's how you say it. Players with remaining tokens will switch them out for shadow min light tokens. Shadow spell tokens. Shadow spell tokens. Players with remaining tokens will switch them out for... Sh shadow spell tokens. Shadow